Just <laughs> practice. Check, check. Mike, check. None of this counts. We're just having good times <laughs> oh, here. Shoes. <laughs> now I'm going to just get the giggles. Okay, so inaugural flow zone podcast uh, starring. Again. Stop. No, we don't. We just keep <laughs> yeah, going. You just start again. Okay, okay, okay. So cheers. We are starting a new chapter in our beautiful life. Cheering with water. I'm oh, not supposed boom, to. Oh, boom. We made it. Short people, short arms. <laughs> this is the Flow Zone podcast. Cue the music. Okay, the music's over. We got me, Justin Flores, my beautiful wife, Shirley Flores, and my cool older brother who's the production team. He's the set design team. He is the director of operations. The man behind the show. What, what? Jacob Kenneth Flores, or the old flow, as I like to call him. I didn't know that's what the K stands for. Yeah. Do you know what my dad says? It's after a Ken, which is a sword. Jacob the sword. No way. That's even cooler. Yeah, I know. I like it. I got nothing. I got Mario, which is like a video game character. Is that it or this little short guy who might be your dad? <laughs> There's a story behind that. So I don't know For if another our time. huge audience wants to know about it, but I'll let them in that my maybe dad is a Olympic alternate at the 84 Olympics, and he's about four feet tall, troll that wears Birkenstocks to our wedding with shorts and uh, maybe a wife beater, if I remember correctly, and a backpack. like he- No, he had a button-up shirt on. So he classed it up for us. Okay, mm-hmm. Just that's for big us. for him. But anyways, enough of him. He's the man, the myth, the legend, but the show must go on. So I guess what we're going to start here, we don't have many, many topics, but I guess this will be more topical where we come on here and we get a guest or two and we talk shop and we talk shit and we drink a couple beers and have a good time. So what's going on today is pretty big where the UFC 223 is happening this weekend tomorrow and yep, it's coming up and there's a lot of drama a lot of things have happened a lot of moving cards and the the chairs on the uh, titanic have been moved is that the right phrase i don't know i don't know what you're the talking deck about chairs on the f- titanic it's like like no the matter- titanic is sinking yeah so this is this card That's, yes kind of thing? exactly so no matter what they do and shuffle things around it's it's gonna be bad i mean you can't have five yeah. opponents for one guy in one week I and know. that's what's happened with Khabib Nurmagomedov. He is four had... fights dropped off the card within in the last six days. Yeah, I think the best fight obviously would have been the Tony fight, and then if after that would have been Connor, obviously, but he is couldn't make weight, but he could still show up there and look in He's shape crazy. and try and decapitate people with throwing mm-hmm. dollies. But yeah, so it's been a little wild ride for the Joe Six Pack fan who is involved and wants to see the fight that he intends to buy for 60 bucks. That's his like savings that he allocates monthly for his right, pay-per-view. Right. And now it's like, do I even buy it? It's like, I'll I But Quinta? now it's just all drama. Like, but how many people are going to buy it who didn't know about it, but then heard about all the stuff that happened all week and yeah, all it might be the TMZ fights. crowd that, that taps into that because I saw Connors in jail and that just gets them hyped for yeah. UFC action. Maybe, I don't mm-hmm. know, but I think the best course of action for the UFC is to just not shine a light on this Connor deal, try and not talk about it and let it happen right. outside of their, their purview. So I think that's what Dana White is doing. And he's been on some interviews saying they, they didn't orchestrate this. It wasn't a PR machine. Really? Are people kind of like, of course, there's like your, like your Jerry Bradley's of the world. I read that's Jerry. What, <laughs> yeah. He gets a shout out. Uh, yeah. So who knows what's really happening, but I don't think it was some contrived inside job where they're conspiring to get yeah. Connor arrested and maybe... And like injure other fighters and pull fighters yeah. off cards. That's crazy talk. That's pull like... Pull people off the card, yeah. WWE people kind of... Yeah, yeah. They, they, they yeah. seem to think that... That's Alex Jones people. Well, WWE, they always have those backroom fights. And, yes, and, yes. And oh, yeah. And crossover fans think that that's what's happening. And that is a great segue to talk about a little bit here we'll mix the worlds with uh, Wrestlemania coming up Saturday which, Sunday Sunday I'm sorry I don't even know but I promised Rhonda I'd watch so I'm really excited we're to watch, watch her it. we're gonna watch it Rhonda <laughs> we're gonna order the Wrestlemania network or no the WWE, <laughs> WWE network okay. you get you get free uh, access to Wrestlemania if you order it oh it's gonna be awesome 
It's going to be weird. It's, it's so weird, weird to watch that stuff now. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I was a fan back in the 80s when you had Ultimate Warrior coming out and Hulkamania and the Andre the Giant. But back then, didn't they think that it was real? No, babe, come no. on. No. Okay, How do you first let's clarify into, something. How do you buy into this like, so back she... locker room fight? It's like, really? Pe- I don't know. I, I just have a hard time buying into the storyline. The storyline of the UFC? That no, 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 of, of the, the, um, the WWE. WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a whole other world that you haven't really ever tapped into because you're no. a millennial that wasn't. <laughs> you knew you were going to. That's like your like, yeah. code word today. And because you were people ad- identify be like, with that and they become like, oh, I get it now. She's a little younger than her older husband who is a Xennial. That means I was born in the 70s. You were born in the mid to late 80s. So there is a little differential there where different worldviews you're a digital i'm an analog kind of thought process where i don't buy it you don't buy it i mean i think it's different for sure but i don't think that's the reason why i don't get wrestlemania or <laughs> wwe <laughs> you do you like just you like i could peg and you and corner there. you and pigeonhole you and make it so you believe that so it's like alex jones said <laughs> me and alex have a lot in common <laughs> we talk on my secret phone and conspire how to Take so, everyone's money. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about WrestleMania. Like, are you, are you going to watch it? Yeah, I'll watch it for sure. Why? I promised Rhonda, and she, I did practice some of the moves with her, which we can't really discuss because it's super secret. Yeah, we'll be quiet about that, but it should be a fun little experience to see cool. her kind of like devour a new the whole like territory even, of yeah, life. Yeah, skill set and everything. Yeah. It was really cool to be hanging out at that ring. She's got a pretty cool setup. For her yeah, house. so, so at like, the Browsy Ranch, they have totally this not w- WWE full-on cage that Travis built and had to flatten the, the dirt that it resides on and make sure it's a level playing field. And Ron and I did a bunch of drills, and my back was sore for about a week. I was running ropes where I, we run perpendicular to each other, barely missing each other for like 15 minutes. I hadn't run in 10 years, but I was gassed out like college wrestling room practice tired but it was fun got to practice some moves and i learned how to do like the spine buster and the reverse ddt and some craziness it was cool some flying arm bars and got to talk a little shop and should be expecting some of those techniques to be wrestlemania yeah and future too right not even just wrestlemania yeah so there's a guys worked on some cool new things and bringing some of like judo and jujitsu and grappling Definitely. That you guys know and that we know into like WWE, I think Hopefully, it'd be cool. That's what I kind of asked her too. If like your techniques are going to be able to be highlighted, or are you going to have to learn their world? And I guess some of those hardcores are going to be out there that aren't going to respect Ronda's school, like her skill set, because she is bringing a whole different technique base, and they want to see their techniques, camel clutches, and these like techniques that are a little right. older and more original. OG wrestling, mm-hmm. fake wrestling world. So we'll see how much she can kind of put her own stamp on the sport before mm-hmm. she's done with that, which yeah. should be cool. Definitely. See it evolve a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going to keep us on track here through this. I'm like, you're the creative one. I'm the type <laughs> A who's like, why are you pigeonholing us? Why are you, why are you telling me what I am? <laughs> there are things to do. I don't here. like things labels, to get done. Babe. So listen, okay. So we talked about WrestleMania, okay. WWE. Yeah. Let's circle back, go back to. UFC 223. Yeah. What's the fight that on that car that excites you the most? Now? Man, so there was a couple that I was really involved or like pumped about that aren't even happening anymore. The uh, Al Kai Quenta and Paul Felder was cool. I think Paul Felder is really I like exciting. Paul Felder. Maybe it's like the Philadelphia connection. I guess or what, so. You know, I've never yeah. met him. I don't know him. I even trained at an MMA or te- taught at an MMA gym in Philly, but I never crossed paths. But seems like a cool dude, uh, yeah. and he's a good fighter. So I was excited about that fight. And of course, the Tony Ferguson fight with uh, Khabib would have been great to to actually see that for the fourth time it's been booked. Fifth time it's been booked. Well, fourth. Next time would be fifth. Okay. If so. they do it again. So I don't know if there's any... You say you're not really... Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if, like, the... You got more of, like, just casual fans that are going to tune in because of all this stuff, but then for, like, a real fan, now this card is... All these exciting fights on the card are just gone now. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, your hardcores are still going to appreciate it because you got 
Thug Rose and Yawana and then um, who else is even on the card? Do you have it all written up on your? You have a, a no. Little, I mean, I could pull it off. Yeah, that'd be great. But um, I'm feeling. I like. Lost. See, I'm always like kind of into like the girl fights. Is CM too. Punk on this card? <laughs> <laughs> Probably at this point, right? Um, but I always really like the girl fights because you know I'm a girl and whatnot. Um, but is that funny? Is that why? Uh, <laughs> well, it's I'm a not girl, obvious. I don't know. You state yeah, that. yeah. Just in case you didn't notice. Um, but like. Felice Herrig, I mean, I just respect her for the fact that she looks like she's a beast. You know, yeah. like, that girl's ripped. Um, and she's fighting Carolina. Oh, yeah, Kovacavich. Kavak- yeah. She's a title fighter. She fought for the belts against yeah. Joanna. And she's, like, pretty impressive. And I like her because she's, like, really, like, cute, like a girly girl, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a cool fight. And then see you, Beck, Ch- Beck Rawlings fighting Ashley uh-huh. Evan Smith. And they're pretty similar to yeah. each other. And they're They kind both of- have a lot of tattoos and are kind of that, like, like hardcore fuck the world kind of yeah. attitude it seems yeah exactly and then beck did her camp back home this time instead of here in san diego yeah. so some intriguing girl fights on the card and then of course the co-main event rose against Joanna. um so let's see what else is on this card we've got khabib and ali Aquanta. Uh, uh-huh. obviously um rose and Joanna. Renato mosiano against calvin kata cater moikanu and cal cater yeah okay um, this guy from Russia, I can't pronounce his name. I Come on, Ka- give it a shot. That's part of the fun. Magomen... Magomedov? No. Magomen... Sharipov. Sharipov. Um, against Sharipov. Kyle Bokniak. Okay. Joel is on. Nice. Like, is he still fighting? Apparently he's still, he's still fight. fighting. He's got like 40 fights under his belt. Uh, 27-15, so a little more than that. But I was pretty close, though. Yeah. 42. Yeah, 42. Um, Chris, Chris Gutzmacher... Man, I feel like I don't know anyone on this yeah. card anymore. Before all the other, I know, f- right? <laughs> Talked about the uh, Carolina against Felice Herrig, Evan Dunham against Olivier um, Aubin Mercer. We got a fellow judoka. Yeah, I I like watching what? him fight. I think he's done a good job of kind of crossing over from the judo to the MMA. Is that a real gym? He's got like a little pipeline there at TriStar where yeah. you, you don't have to kind of go through this on your own. You have champs that have trained there that train there now and have retired champs and. It's just somewhere that yeah. I'm sure he's optimizing his his talent and his mm-hmm. skill. So, even more so probably than even at another place. So yeah. that's a good thing for a fellow judo uh-huh. to make the most of this yeah. career past your career. Totally, and he doesn't really like leverage his judo. Like he'll do some nice. No, throws it's more of sometimes, like a wrestling grind him out yeah. judo style, like yeah. the pre leg grab rule change right. where you could just grind someone with like leg shots and body locks rather mm-hmm. than this upright lapel sleeve game. So yeah. yeah. Definitely. He's got some good hands, too. And then um, we talked about the other girlfriend on the card, and then Devin Clark against Mike Rodriguez. That oh, starts yeah. our night off. That's a wow, so 205 fight. I'm a little bit fight, upset so. now that I don't... See, so, like, you talk about, really like... shifted. You wanted to see Pettis, mm-hmm. right? No he Pettis. doesn't get to fight. Um, Paul Felder, we talked about that. And then you got Michael Chiesa, happen. who got all cut up, Michael who's not Chiesa fighting. Michael Chiesa doesn't get to fight. Yeah. Um, Alex Caceres doesn't get to fight because he's supposed to fight. Ray Borg was Lobov a title challenger against, against Demetrius Brandon, yeah, at one Brandon point, Marino. and now he's off the card. Yeah. So, man. So, four fights came off that card in really, like, the last two or they three days. They should just throw this thing on Fox Sports 2 or something. I know, right? Like, oh, man, now we got to pay for this? They're like, still squeezing ugh, money out of people. $65 a, or something like that. So, who do you think, okay, main event, who do you think, what do you think that looks like? I think there's a mauling and maybe a... 187 in the the main event because I don't think that Al Quinta has He's the ready. tools or any kind of game plan set. He's just going to wing it. He might land a lucky shot. You never know. Things are crazy, yeah. but odds are 99.9% that you got could be mauling him right. and just doing what he wants with him and being on top of him and yelling, telling him to give up while he does it because he needs that yeah. belt and it's he's destined for it. So now I, I don't know if that one's going to be a three round fight or a five. I'm assuming it's gotta be five. five for the belts. Yeah. Right. Um, what is, but, what is Al Quinta ranked? Oh geez. I'm going to get a seven know. and he's tight fighting for the belts. What's that? 155. Give me like a minute. But, um, so you know how in Khabib's like last few fights, he kind of drags it down. He kind of yeah. like toys with his opponents. You think he's gonna do that? You think? Yeah, it's Ally like Emmy. Quinta is getting like, out of it. It's like our dog when our dog is able to catch a bird, and <laughs> the bird never really dies. It's just tortured for about thirty minutes, and it's thrown in the air by Poor the snout. Bird, yeah, it's like the saddest thing ever. Yeah, well, it's it's part of nature, you know. 
11. Yeah. Oh my Quentin. God, no way. Did you really? So I was just going to ask you to guess, but yeah, 11. So, okay. So How that, pissed are you if you're one of the other eight guys that's ahead of him? Well, I think Pettis is ranked even above him. Where? Well, see, no, Pettis, Pettis is 12th. Oh, wow. So that's so probably why they did that. So maybe that was part of the, but they Pettis, decided that's to That's interesting because Pettis was a former belt holder. So you'd think that that would supersede gets, like, yeah. 11 to 12, like. <clears throat> but I guess they go with the modern rankings and what what it's on paper is what they go with. So yeah, I don't know. I think the best fight that they could have done if they would have stuck with it would have been Pettis. Just even stylistically. We, no, no. Pettis right, gets then. beat up, but he's so still. So what do you mean? I think more people know who he is, mm-hmm. and I will get a few more buys out of people. But Ally Quinta is like a local guy. So like there's a lot of swirl in New York right now. I don't. I mean I'm assuming they're already sold out. I don't out, think but that's going to change like pay per views, which is all that matters at this late stage because the sales yeah. are the sales of the seats. Yeah, yeah. No, I th- I bet it's already sold out. Yeah. But so yeah, that's so those two main fights or the one main so, fight. So that's that one. What do you think about the um, the co-main event? I you think, think Joanna is going in there and taking her belt back. I have a few opinions on that. I think Joanna is putting too much placement on her diet and that was the only reason and she had to fire them and get rid of them and they were like family but yet they screwed her over and some they gave her nachos or carne asada burritos who knows what happened (laughs) that's what i would be (laughs) 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 she crossed (laughs) maybe that's why she's not (laughs) yeah she likes sessies it's good we just had it tonight it was the best so um i don't know if Joanna's like fully accepted the fact that she had to soul search and find out the root of the problem and get to the bottom of it or if she like kind of wiped it under the rug and kind of said and said i'll fix this and move on which is a denial so it just depends on which you know dehydrated girl shows up or is fully ready to to bang girl shows up because she gets punched again and she doesn't have any any fluid floating around her brain to protect her from the skull hitting her brain, then she'll get knocked out again and her jaw might be gone. She's had a hundred fights, Muay Thai, MMA combined. So that's someone that you got to look at is like, yeah. okay, it just goes one day. Yeah. I mean, and Rose isn't the only one that's kind of like, I mean, I don't want to say knocked her out, but other girls have kind of been able to drop her Yeah. more recently. Um, yeah, but nothing to that level. No, 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 not at all. And it was over and over. It was just, I think it was in the later rounds where she actually got kind of tooled on once in a while where it was like Carolina knocked her down. And then mm-hmm. she had, um, what's the the girl that Jessica fought? Penny. Um, uh, Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade. But even um, Claudia Gadella did yeah, a little bit here too. and there. Yeah. I mean, again, not knocked her out or anything close to it, but I don't know. She's like kind of putting, like you said, like all that weight on the weight cut. And it's like, well maybe you should respect rose's like technique, ability skill, technique mindset. speed did you yeah. see we saw it together that embedded when she was like boxing tennis, tennis balls, balls that were getting thrown at her like all that's together that's so gimmicky to me but you know what i, I know w- but that speed and like i don't know i just thought it was pretty cool i was impressed i wouldn't be able to do it <laughs> but there's a lot you can't do easy <laughs> i could be the ufc strawweight champion well there is a video <laughs> jacob made a video of it Jacob made a video of me training. So this is Dana where we White splice, we splice it, it in. <laughs> we'll, splice, we'll splice it in right now. And we'll Don't show off the skills. I think the next too. time they do have a straw weight. Actually, I think you'd have to be atom weight. Because yeah. you'd have to be 105. I, mean, I could wake up to... Yeah. If I skip dinner, I could be 115. So yeah. yeah. be a tough one to win at 115. Jess and I will bring back the UFC. <laughs> oh, not bring back, but bring the UFC yes. atom weight division. We'll be number one and two. She, I mean, we'll I think she'd be, title. she'd be a force at 105 too. Just if they brought back that division, just be taking off that muscle and being able to like make weight comfortably. Yeah, Not, that's a tough thing when you're like for what two, three years now planning on making straw weight, and then you have to yeah. go down. Like you've kind of built on that. To yeah. where it's it's more than just extra fat, right? It's extra muscle that's, and she, like she cuts weight. maturity in your body. I mean, from what I remember, like with her for some of those weight cuts, she did a good job making 115, but she struggled those last few pounds. It's not like an extra 10 is going to be easy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, maybe another conversation mm-hmm. when she's here on the podcast. So hopefully yeah. we'll have her on in That'd one of the fun. future op- uh, episodes. Be fun to hear her just, you know, her, so, sh- her deal. So Khabib for the main event. Yeah. Rose or Joanna? I'll go, I'm going to flip that coin mentally, and it's going to land on Ioana. All right. I just think that she... She's a 
beast. She's a beast, and she's she's won what five title defenses. And sure, did she did slip that last fight, but I think that it's I don't even want to call it a fluke in that last fight. But uh, Joanna has a lot of skills that she didn't get to show off in that fight, and I think she's gonna have a different approach and game plan. Yeah, I have no idea what those things are because I'm not a striking master right, right. like e- either of these two female fighters. So it'll be fun to watch as like me being a fan of the sport. I couldn't tell you what's going to happen and take place technically in, in that realm of high level striking. So yeah. I know it was a, it was a left that initially stunned Joanna and actually knocked her to her butt, I think. And then again, yeah, and a then big left about a minute or two later, mm-hmm. which were two solid shots, but they didn't look heavy handed. They looked very quick and... Yeah, it was more fluid. about the speed and yeah, the surprise the, of it the, than the, the technical the aspect actual, rather than the power. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So those two fights, I'll have to go with uh, the kind of, I guess, who you expect to win. I don't know who the odds on favorite is for that fight, Ioana and. Uh, Ioana is. So, okay. like, oh. slightly, like, plus 100, minus 100. But she is a favorite, which yeah. is interesting, too, because the champ isn't usually the underdog. Yeah, that's true. That's interesting. That, I mean, it's weird. Bookmakers and. They sometimes get it terribly wrong, and yeah. it's when you bet big. Even though we've did we bet a few times, but never really. We did, but not never. Did we win? Or we no, lose? we no. always lose. We, it's like the stock market. We, we always can't. lose. We're terrible. We we've invested in about seven different stocks that have all gone down drastically right after. So yeah. and then anytime we gamble, we go to a casino, we lose. No, it's bad. But it's every time I do it on my good. own, I win. Oh, so, so you're, you're the bad luck. <laughs> yes, you're always like, don't bet so much, and you're you're like yeah. telling me these I'm things, making me insecure. And then if I'm not there, you just wake up in the bathroom with a bunch <laughs> of chips in your pocket. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's the perfect way to gamble: is to get blackout drunk and call your wife uh, at 4 a.m. when you're an hour and a half away. Yeah, yeah to come pick you up. It's perfect, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you have a wonderful wife that will actually get up and pick you up. Oh, she was the best. She is the best. My wife, Shirley Flores, did the deed. I couldn't, my phone died. I woke up in the bathroom with a bunch of chips in my pocket. Couldn't call her. Had to ask about a dozen people to borrow their phone. And I couldn't remember her number because I'm so out of it. Just comatose mental blackout mode. What happened? How'd you end up there? What happened to your ride and, you know, your friends? Yeah. I got you bad give, friends. Dude. You want to give a shout out to your best I, I friend? I can't throw people under the bus like that. So <laughs> can I? I mean, is it throwing them under the bus if it's the truth of what happened? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it was my fault, <laughs> and he didn't just leave me. He looked a little bit here and there and had his own. He had to go. He has a family, kids, a life to go back to. He can't wipe my butt, you know. So I'm the one who passed out in the bathroom. But that's that's just something that's and not It's a story even, for another day, yeah, right? Exactly. We'll get Ryan on the podcast. Yeah, once Ryan's on here, we can yeah, ask him we'll about figure, it, or you can. We'll figure all that out. Yeah. So okay, we're back to square three. The, the another fight we, if we want to talk about. Let's go with who else we got, babe, on that card? It's, it's, it's kind of rough. Slim picking, slim picking. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. It's like, ugh. well, let's just go over the whole general idea of the card. Okay, so mm-hmm. it's in Brooklyn. We got chaos surrounding it there's fights that have been made and dropped and made and dropped numerous yeah. times so as like a company you kind of kind of got to worry what's happening here with the ufc that they were bought out the fertita brothers sold for four billion dollars and wmg wmeimg bought it and they have to make money and that's the number one goal mm-hmm. to recoup that debt that they owe Right, they're creditors. It's going to be bad. So I guess they're, I don't know if they really have a big plan. I would have to get, we'd have to get our boy Brad on the podcast and kind of talk Dude, to him about there that. there you go. So big thanks to Brad Slater. He uh, got Shirley and I and a couple others some good seats for one of the UFCs that was here recently in Anaheim. And That's right. We got to that sit front fun. row for John Jones and Dan Cormier, which was a little, and Cyborg, which was a little bit traumatic for my wife, Shirley. Yeah. She saw John Jones elbow DC about oh 14 God. times they in the temple. Oh, my God. They had to stop those fights. It had to have been Mario Yamasaki, right? Probably. It's yeah, yeah, he's usually the guy involved whenever there's a late stoppage yeah. or something ridiculous. He, he has yeah. like a death wish. He wants to be in there when someone's bleeding out yeah. and dying. Yeah, exactly. He wants to be like on the news, on that contract. On and he'll fight be going like stopped. that, yeah. like with an open heart, just like, okay, yeah. I, I let that guy die. So yeah. that was a cool thing of him. Thank you very much, Brad. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else we got, babe? What other so, subject matter? So, okay. I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but 
any other thoughts on the whole Conor McGregor like bus incident? Like, He's how crazy was crazy. this whole week? I guess it was crazy. I mean, I I think it's a circus and people enjoy that. So I think actually Conor's like filling a void that people want to see yeah. and just that craziness that a lot of the other fighters don't offer. They they do things by the numbers and by the book and they still want to be promoted heavily. And in this day and age, that's not the world we live in. They want to be as big yeah. as stars. So it's just a question of like how far does it go and how far does like the UFC, which like wants to be like recognized, like equivalent to the NFL. The, NBA, exactly. They don't MLB. want to be like WWE. They want to be thought of as like <laughs> Your NFL, your MLB, like your family type of organization. So, yeah. like, how far will they tolerate, and what expense will they kind of put these things out there that are going to create all that, like hoopla, chaos drama, and, chaos, yeah, whole hooligans ratings, right? going to jail. So, yeah, I guess there's a lot of a lot of moving parts there, but all in all, I'm entertained by it all. I like the fight aspect, of course. I think there's yeah. there's a lot of different demographics the ufc taps into there's like the fighters fighter where they want to watch like technical clean matches that impress them on a a, like a cerebral level Mm -hmm. and then there's other people that like the drama of it that want to see just the storyline and the the emotional aspect and there's the uh the entertaining side where it's just just blood and guts let's do the coliseum or rome and this is how you know rome falls is the, the chaos of the ufc is part of it that's but right i think i'm some a little bit of all of those I, I we've done martial arts our whole lives i've been a judoka since i was a kid i wrestled in high school i have taken up jujitsu as of late i've coached in the ufc i've coached the team usa in judo i coach a lot of wrestlers so i like the technical aspect but that's almost uh my second favorite part of the whole thing. I'm a fan. You know, I like right. the first you time like I to went. sit back and just yeah. enjoy it, right? And it just so happens that I, I'm privileged enough to know a lot of the fighters and know some of the backstories and how they're training and what they're doing and been a part of some of their training camps and being able to help them along the way. So it's, it's cool being involved in this world. I mean, yeah, I don't know. People that listen to this don't know, but surely he was been in the octagon post UFC title fight in Rio de Janeiro where family that was sitting in the front row, which was Shirley, uh, got to go in after Ronda knocked out yeah. Bech Cohea. And it's just a funny Where's Waldo <laughs> photo where all of us are. are I'm trying to hide in the back. <laughs> I want just, nothing to do with I it. Think you're behind. Dana White made me. He literally made me go in the cage. So, <laughs> it was pretty thanks, classic. Thanks, Dana White. It was pretty classic yeah, seeing fun. you in there I after. To, to bring you in. So I was sitting right next to like those. They had like four. Ronda had four seats and it was Ronda. Well, it was Ronda's mom two sisters and me because one of the sisters was gonna be in the back because her son was really young and she's like no i don't want to go up front like i'm just gonna stay in the back so they had an open seat so they were like hey shirley come sit with us and right after the fight like ronda like smashes bitch Korea, you know her best probably best win of her career that was the zenith that was the that was the pinnacle pinnacle yeah yeah and uh dana white like looks at us and like grabs us and i was like no 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 i think it was me and jessica colgan which is like ronda's assistant we're like no and he was like grabbed us and put us in there so yeah that was interesting it was fun it was cool it was was cool cool. it was cool to see you in there and and it was cool to like yeah totally that was such a fun night and then it was cool to like come back to work and be like all my <laughs> all my peers and co-workers like Are we're like jealous. we saw you on tv you in the it. octagon what we what yeah it must be yeah. a little surreal for them to be like what yeah i had to sign a couple autographs <laughs> that's a pretty good one i mean there's yeah. other layers to that story that if we, we want to just keep going there where after the fight we all go out and we go to like some very uh, ritzy underground club with the Fertitta brothers or just Lorenzo actually uh, had the whole thing catered and closed down and we yeah. were there to they flew a chef from like because Ronda loves Sao Paulo to Rio yeah, Ronda loves chicken wings and so they flew a chef like the best chef for, that makes the best they were chicken okay. wings they were alright I mean <laughs> I don't no like chicken hooters. I, yeah, yeah. the yeah. best chef that makes chicken wings <laughs> I didn't even know that was a genre in the category. Well, Rhonda seemed to... Is that an oxymoron? Is that what they call that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chef's <laughs> table. Chicken wings. Um, yeah, and, and it was literally, what, like 
10 15 of us like rana's closest like people that travel to brazil with her yeah. and dana white and lorenzo and dude lorenzo would smash and he kept kissing justin <laughs> just on the cheek it's not like we were yeah, making yeah, out yeah yeah just on the cheek but <laughs> and i mean the fight was really late too because of the brazil and the u.s time zone and all that but um we left and went back to our hotel room and the sun was out it was, yeah it was awesome it was a pretty cool experience i mean just the, that whole whirlwind of circus that was like ronda's mma ufc career was pretty dope and you know it was cool that we got to be a little part of that and experience those experiences and get kind of an inside view of how things run and operate in the ufc at least pre yeah. pre purchase so yeah. it was a little bit more of a mom and pop if you want to say where uh, I, I think the the people in charge were more really involved as far as like caring for their fighters and making sure that everyone got taken care of in a different way where now the way it's structured is a little bit more impersonal from what I've heard and what I've seen. It's more of like a business now, it's right? A business, they got to yeah. pay their creditors. They got to make money. They got to yeah. increase their valuation even more than it already Is it publicly has. traded now? No. Not sure. It isn't, oh, no. no. It's still privately no, owned. Um... Okay, so we got to kind of wrap things up. You said a little bit in the beginning, but to our like listeners, probably a couple of them. Um, the three. What, the three of them. Thank you, guys. Um, it's going to be Jacob what should and we, you. <laughs> what should we look forward to? Do you know who's going to be on the podcast um, next time? Or what's the next couple months look like for this podcast? Sure. So for the flow zone. The flow zone. So we're going to try and squeeze one out a week, uh, have a guest. And from all walks of life, mostly topical stuff that they're involved in and, and try and get this viewership a little bit more diverse than just what we talk about today, which is MMA, UFC, try and get judo uh, flavor involved, the wrestling flavor, the grappling world, uh, conspiracy theories, things that I've kind of been interested in. You've been interested, maybe yeah. not you so much. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Your so ultimate goal is to have Alex Jones on. Is that that would be saying? pretty cool, even though he's a psychopath. <laughs> Uh, it would be cool to. That's not how you're gonna get him on there. Oh, I know he's gonna he hear to that. Cooler. Yeah, he used yeah. to be someone that back now in. he's an establishment hack. Yeah, he yeah. kind of sold yeah, out totally. and was able to be co-opted by his love of being in power and having Trump his right hand man yeah. and buddy buddy and yeah, him so actually well. setting policy. So like, Trump would have conversations with Alex Jones, and the next thing you know, Trump is trying to like push an agenda of Alex Jones. Mm -hmm. So yeah, who knows who's really in charge? Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, back in the day when I was first starting to question things and the whole new world order was something that was like, what is that? And then the deeper down the rabbit hole you go, the more you start to question the society and what how we live and right. what is actual our freedoms and how we might be all slaves. So uh, it's an interesting thing to think of. Even though I am in sci-fi, it's just for being creative. I yeah. like to delve into those little wormholes and, and see what, what lives in there, that freak show of... of conspiracy so we'll get some of that going and try and interject some of our our fun life into it if people even <laughs> our <care>. fun life <laughs> our <laughs> fun life includes hiding in our garage at 10 o'clock <laughs> at night because our kids asleep upstairs Hoping that Adam does not wake up. <laughs> praying not, like crossing I've our fingers praying. i've been praying this whole time <laughs> so yeah i guess i should have stated the obvious but for us we know we have a 16 month old kid who is the love of our life but you know he's a handful and he he's he crazy at night he'll He'll cry for hours on end, so we're, we're actually having a good one so far, and he hasn't interrupted our fun podcast. That's what we think. We're hoping. We <laughs> yeah, have we headphones on. <laughs> we go inside. It's a He's shit been show. streaming for an hour. It's all good. <laughs> Makes him tough. Yeah, so I'll try and bring on some cool people, and so will my wife, and we'll try and uh, entertain you, so to speak. Are you not entertaining? So I hope you guys enjoyed this yeah. <laughs> inaugural Flow Zone, Zone Pop podcast. Cue the music. <laughs> and sponsors, if we get some. <laughs> Peace.